All right, welcome back to all you bull riders out there. That music was for you. Country Western, isn't it great? This is Clay, Clay Nelson Life Balance Hour, and we're talking about complacency. Now, before we went on the break last time, I was talking about getting present to what complacency is, understanding that complacency will be in your life the rest of your life, and the smarter you are, the more action you have in your life, the easier it is to, to drop off into a complacent mindset. And we were going to talk about how to, one, recognize that you're in a complacent mindset, and then, two, what to do about it. So remember we said on the last break, I said, if you're human, you're going to have complacency in your life. Ninety percent of the, of the humans on the planet have to deal with automatic ways of thinking, and that's complacency. It's where you can you've been doing so many things so many times the same way. Your brain doesn't have to be present to what you do. Got it? Clay, I want to throw this question in here mm-hmm. from, uh, from Chad. And uh, he asks, where do you draw the line between being complacent and just being downright content? Well, content is a place where you've set your goals, you've reached them, and now you want to waller in them a little bit. It's okay to waller in them, okay? But it's not okay to live there forever unless the goal you set, uh, you reached when you were 93. And then it's okay to waller as much as you want to. <laughs> but if you're not 93, you got to get up and get moving. you got other things to go do. Or you got to teach people how to set goals and get it. You understand? Yeah. So it, it's just a mindset. If you're happy where you are, all right, and you're not responsible for somebody else moving along, and you're not the idea factory for a business, and you're not responsible for somebody else's welfare, and that's a big one, both child or white hairs, uh, then it's okay to sit down and just relax. You've earned the right. Okay, and if you're smart enough to get there young, good, do it. But you know, respectfully, don't sit there too long if you're under 80, because you're going, you, know, you end up starting to vibrate to death, and then you're. That's why I, they have medical insurance. I think people yeah, really yeah. do confuse those terms, though. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, you, yeah, you don't have to be sitting in one place to be content. You can be doing lots of things. You can be content moving. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Nice to said. I mean, you really can. All right. Now, so one of the ways to understand that you're complacent and to really get it is you're sitting there going, well, let me see what's next. And, gee, that worked pretty good. I think I'll sit here for a while. But your mind is going, gee, I wonder what that would be like. Or how can I go there? Or what is that person thinking? I wonder what it's like outside. Or what would, what would it be like to get up at midnight and go write a paper? What would it be like? Like last night in, in my house, I got up and I was thinking about a client I had. And I woke up at about 12, 15, and I was laying there thinking about the client. And I said, heck with this. I'm going to get up and go write the email to the client, get ready to send it in the morning. So I can come back and go back to sleep. So it's all about being able to surrender and deal with your head. Get into action. Now, I'm going to give you some tips on how to manage complacency, both getting out of it and respectfully staying in it if you want. Now, think about this. If your mind is designed to create, because that's what your mind's designed to do. You can create stuff that gets you moving or create stuff to stop you. Either way, it's designed to create. It is not designed to store stuff. Now, there is a few things, like I've said in past shows, that you want to remember. One, don't ever get your mom mad at you. That could get ugly. Two, if you feel your toes wrapped around the edge of a cliff, don't jump off. You can't fly. And three, don't eat poison. It'll kill you. So those three things, you just want to just take it on and just remember. The rest of this stuff is you don't need to store it. So here's the deal. If there's something you want in life and you don't have it, you have to ask for it. All right? Now, here's another tip. Okay? I want you to write down what you're feeling. I want you to clear your head by writing. All right? So if you write down what you're feeling or what you're present to in all areas of your life, your business, your family, your health, your spiritual life, or your community life, all right, how you're feeling and um, how you're resigned to powerlessness or what you're doing to, in, to be present to your complacency, I mean, the writing down tool is a phenomenal place just to get rid of it. Think about that. There's a process called clearing that I'll talk about on another show. And clearing is just a process where you use a tool either by talking to somebody else or writing things down just to get it out of your head. Get rid of it. All right? Now, second, get in touch. So first was write down what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Okay? Actually, just write it down. And that process of writing it down will get it out of your head and get you moving because you can always wad it up and throw it away. Or... You can give it to an accountability partner. Remember last week's show? You can give it to an accountability partner and ask them to hold you accountable for not going there anymore. See what this says? Don't let me do this anymore. All right? Which includes drugs, smoking, yelling. Like I had to learn to modulate about nine years ago with my kids. Learn how to modulate. You know, it's a, don't yell. Don't flail my arms around because you scare people. 
So I learned to modulate. Now I'm really calm when I want to yell at him. You know, works pretty good. So now, second, get in touch with what you have in your life and what you're taking for granted. Now think about that. Many of us you know, really don't realize what we have until it's gone. Many of us don't realize, no matter how hard we're working to keep it, quite frankly, what we're keeping. Many of us are just sitting there going, life is hard. I know how to do, I know what I got to do, I know what to do to keep what I've got at the level I've got it, but I'm not really present in the cabeza. I'm not really home. I'm not really alive. So you have to get in touch with what you've got. You have to get in touch with how much you complain and, or complain about having your children, um, and, uh, complain about having children. How about this? How about complaining about having to you know, take them to sporting events? I mean, you've got to be darn lucky and appreciate that, one, you have a car, two, it's got gas, and three, you've got kids that want to go play sports. Understand? Plus, kids that want to go play sports get you out of your head and out of your house so you can go be with people. Or how about this? You can just appreciate how good the grass is growing on the field where they're playing or the, what the trees look like. All right? Most people, most kids don't play on the freeway. What you got? Uh, Clay, speaking of kids here, Linda sent a message in here that says, her, uh, my teenage son is pretty content just skating through high school. I, I think that means just, just, just doing the bare minimum. Uh, his grades are in the average range, but he's capable of much more. Um, any suggestions on what to do to get him motivated, get him out of his complacency? Sure. Ask him what he wants. He knows how to work the system. He knows how to do what he's doing to get acceptable grades or to not be yelled at or to not be visible. Ask him what he wants. Ask him what would light him up. Ask him what would excite him. You know, a lot of, a lot of education doesn't happen in a classroom. Education happens in an interpersonal relationship between two people and how they communicate. Ask him, uh, you know, does he want to know anything about baseball? Does he want to know anything about karate? Does he want to know anything about some sort of speaking engagement? Does he want to know what's going on in politics? My 17-year-old son is really watching the elections this year. That's and great. And he's doing great in school. And he's got me sitting down watching television, and I'm learning more about what I'm supposed to be voting on just because i got to teach him. <laughs> no, it's really cool. Anything you put out with kids, any energy you put into the kids, you will get back tenfold, I guarantee it, Okay. That's also negative, too. Any negative energy you put into the kids, you'll get back tenfold. So be careful what you put out. You're going to get it back. Now, how about this? How about complaining about how often your parents call to check in on you? And that's for you guys, the young people out there. You know, I call my son when he's out on Friday and Saturday night. He has 11 o'clock curfew. But I call him about 9 o'clock just to see how he's doing. And he used to get upset about that. But now he knows I just care. You understand? I just care. I trust him, but I still care. Well, I, I like what you said about kind of light, lighting the fire up, you know, for, for someone, what, what lights them up. Do you think that would work in an office environment, too, if you Absolutely. have a mo an employee who is complacent? Well, think about this. Here's the answer to that one. If you got everybody happy and sent them to work, what do you think would happen to work? It would be productive. All Hello, of a we get everything yeah. done really quick, right? <laughs> what do you think the number one growth industry in the world is? Used to be the net. Now, guess what it is? All right. Mm. It's all about how, where should I go take some vacation? What do I do? Because people have forgotten how to play. So they, yeah. keep, they keep stuffing more people on these cruise ships. And they keep making the cruise ships bigger. Now they even have a cruise ship that you can buy a condo on and never get off the cruise ship. Oh, boy, that's fun. Yeah, that's you understand? a lot of time on a let's boat. Go, <laughs> let's go live in a box and float around on the ocean. You want to? Hey, yeah. but you're moving forward. You're, you're yeah. always moving. Anyway, but the point is, I mean, there's all le different levels of complacency, I guess, depending on how much money you got. All right? <laughs> So now, so getting out of a complacent way of beating. One, you have to recognize it. Two, you have to write down what it is. Three, you have to be willing to be held accountable for changing it. Four, you have to really be able to appreciate what you got. Now, how do you appreciate what you got? You have to get present to what it is. All right, you can't assume what you got. You can't assume. If you look around your house and it's nice and clean and orderly and um, looks pretty new and all the cupboards are full and everything else, you're pretty darn lucky. There's a lot of people on the planet that don't have that. OK, so you got to get really, really clear about what's going on. Wow. I'm not complacent about breaks, are they? OK, no. I got to take another break. Uh, snuck up on me. This is Clay Nelson and Clay Nelson Life Balance Hour. We're talking about getting rid of complacency and, quite frankly, the cost of it. So come on back because I'm surely not complacent about it. Good